Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Stephanie and Michael. Thank you for joining tonight's webinar. Um, the focus of tonight's webinar is going to be how to navigate assessment collection challenges in this inflated economy. Um, it's going to be sectioned into several different sections, and I'll be tackling several bullet points. Um, the first one is just a brief overview of um, what an inflated economy means. As, as you all probably feel the impacts and, and can see the news, we're currently living in an inflated economy. Inflation is um, is high. It's not as high as it used to be exactly one year ago, but we're, we're still feeling the effects um, in our pockets. And, and this ultimately does um, impact HOAs as, as members of society and also on a household level. Um, not only do does this inflated economy impact um, an HOA, it also impacts everyone, corporations, small businesses, households, um, mom and pop shops. And we're going to also going to discuss how we can understand the current economic landscape. And inflation, by definition, is basically the rise in prices for goods and services and how that impacts the purchasing power that we have as consumers. Um, it means that our purchasing power, the dollar that we have today, can purchase a lot less or somewhat less than what it could have purchased yesterday. Um, and we all feel that effect. I'm sure you all have heard or remembered the the egg prices frenzy that um, existed a few months ago or a year ago, where eggs were skyrocketed in prices. That was mainly driven due to inflation, among other factors. Um, we all know that this primarily began during the COVID pandemic. And although that pandemic has officially been um, considered to be over, we're still feeling those effects financially. And we're also going to discuss how these things impact the HOA. Um, not only board members have a really keen interest in understanding how these have an effect in, in how they manage their communities, but also those that aren't on the board within the association. Um, Cause we all pay our assessments, we all pay our dues, and we want to understand how how those payments go and impact the community as a whole. So firstly, we all know the HOAs are made up of families and households and individuals. Um, and not only do we all feel those impacts of the inflation, but we all know that um, the HOA has a budget, correct? Um, the budget is prepared at the beginning or prior to the new year beginning. And when inflation takes over and the budget has already been prepared, that budget can sometimes be tossed out the window if it wasn't budgeted properly. Um, that's why it's very key for not only um, the management company, but also the board to work in tandem with their property manager to make sure that the budget that's being created for the next year is in line, not only with current year expenses, but also future predictions and um, analysis driven decisions based on possible price increases for the next year. And we, we all know that this does have an immediate impact in homeowners within the association. Um, sometimes it can mean between deciding to pay your HOA assessment or paying the groceries. It could be paying the groceries or paying your water bill or paying your water bill or fixing the fence in front of your yard that's causing a violation on your property. All of these could be factors that lead to the HOA having increased assessment delinquencies, um, which is the, the primary goal for boards and management companies to prevent. Now, let's see what's the importance of these assessments. Well, the assessments is the, the income, the revenue that the HOAs generate, and that's how the HOA survives and thrives and pays their vendors, correct? Um, without, without getting too far into the amounts and the frequencies of the assessments, because it all varies based, in, based on the association. Um, some communities might have a yearly assessment. Some might have it quarterly. Some might have it monthly. Um, others even semi-annually, just twice a year. At the end of the day, those assessments must be paid. 
And the lack of those payments being made can cripple an association. And, and as part of a management company, we've seen it time and time again, where um, homeowners not paying their assessments or just a, a small fraction of the community that's delinquent has detrimental impacts on the community's ability to thrive and, and to pay its vendors. The assessments not only fund the maintenance, as you all well know, of the community, the common elements such as the clubhouse, the pool, um, if there's a gate at the front of, or the entrance of the community, but it also allows for improvements. Uh, maybe the gate is outdated and the board has decided it's time to renovate it or time to replace it. Maybe the community is looking a little bit boring and the, the board wants to spice it up a little bit and have some seasonal flowers or seasonal colors. All those things are paid by the assessments or the special assessments that the homeowners or that we pay to our HOAs. And failure to submit those payments, not only on time, but just in general, can, can have detrimental financial impacts on the community. Um, the community might be in a position where vendors aren't paid on time. Maybe vendors aren't paid at all. Maybe that special roofing project can't be paid because there aren't enough funds in the reserve account. Maybe the HOA cannot pay its utilities. Um, as, as part of a management company, we, we've, we've seen examples of some communities um, owing the utility company several tens of thousands of dollars in, in water expenses. Um, and it all stems from the lack of payments by its members for their monthly dues or their, their annual dues. This could also lead the community into um, having lawsuits against them from homeowners for not being able to take care of HOA responsibility expenses within the community. And one thing that is extremely key that not only the management company needs to take into account, but also the board is timely and accurate communication of what it means and what the assessments are meant to, are meant to be used for. Homeowners need to be informed that the dues that they pay on a monthly basis or quarterly basis, not only is a contribution to the upkeep of the community, but it's also a direct investment into their own property value. Um, the, pur the purpose of an HOA is to maintain and promote property values, not only for the individuals, but also for your neighbors, for the community as a whole. When um, the person living down, down the road from you is not paying their dues and everyone else on, the, on that road is paying their dues, it's, it's, it's not fair. We're, we're, all, we're all contributing to the same um, common elements. And some people are just benefiting from those things without, without paying their way. Um, the, community, the community can begin to lack um, where certain vendors cannot be paid if payments aren't made on time. And ultimately, it can lead to a reduced um, value in people's homes. Um, therefore, making it a little bit more difficult to sell their property in case they ever wanted to hit the market. But there are things that the board can do or the HOA can do to facilitate homeowners that have financial constraints. For example, um, there could be payment plans that can be set up. And it's also important to be flexible. Um, it's important to be flexible because we, we all understand the economic times in which we're currently living. Um, there's times where you might have a rough month, you might have a rough few months and, you know, you're picking and choosing which bills to pay. Um, you have to prioritize certain bills. You know, you have the money coming in, but maybe you have to push this bill back a few months or I'm sorry, a few weeks. Um, your HOA dues are due on the first. Maybe you can't pay until the 15th of the month, maybe even the next month at all. Um, and it's important to have that constant communication um, and be flexible, you know, um, provide payment plans, provide um, alternative payment methods so that these dues can be collected um, and not just left on, a, on an AR aging report. Also, we, we, will, we will see cases in which some homeowners just refuse to pay. 
um, or don't have the ability or the economic, you know, situation to be able to pay their dues. And there are several avenues the HOA can explore. For example, the HOA has the right to assess late fees, interest fees, um, dependent on their governing documents and um, their declarations. They can file liens against certain homeowners and they could also send accounts into collections to their HOA attorney. All of these options also promote not only the collection of these dues, but it also prevents it from happening again in the future. Especially if the HOA has an attorney that they can advise, that they can seek counsel from and assist in the process of collecting these dues. Um, one more thing that I wanted to touch on is the importance of having reserves. The assessments, the dues that homeowners pay into um, their HOA do ultimately and can ultimately end up in a reserve account. These reserves are meant for um, emergency situations where there's an emergency repair or project that needs to be completed within the community, as well as future projects. And something that each community needs to have is a reserve study. Um, a reserve study is usually performed by an engineering company. They come in, they assess um, the HOA, see what needs to be repaired. They can kind of help the community find out how, what is the lifespan of, of for example, roofs or common areas in the association and help the community set up a plan and a budget for when that roof will need repair. Let's say it's five years from now. But within those first five years, we have to contribute into that reserve account via our assessments so that in five years, we have those funds to pay for that project. And it's crucial to budget appropriately when doing so. Um, for example, if we know that this project is approaching next year, we have to budget our assessments correctly. Is an increase needed for next year or can we maintain the level we currently have? If we do have an increase, it has to be communicated to the membership according to the governing documents. Usually it's sometime before the new, well, it is sometime before the new year, but there are certain date criteria that must be met. Um, and also once that reserve study is done, once the assessments have been decided for the next year, um, once the budget has been completed, communication comes back into play. Communicating with the membership um, when their dues are going to be charged, when those assessments need to be paid, and what the consequences are for not paying those dues. When late fees will be charged, when the interest will be charged, and if there is a grace period, also communicating and letting them know, hey, your assessment will be charged on X date, but you technically have 60 days to pay this before the late fee kicks in. Um, not only does this help the community work as one, but it also helps the financial um, standing of the HOA as a whole. That way the HOA can meet all its goals, um, fulfill all of its financial obligations, as well as save funds and be able to complete those projects in future years. Well, that's that's the end of, of my talking points. Um, I actually finished a little bit earlier than expected. And now I'd like to take the time to open the floor to Michael and, and Stephanie and see if you guys have any questions related to the points that were discussed this evening, or if you have certain examples within your own communities um, and you'd like to see how we could help you navigate um, or explore certain options regarding what we discussed tonight. Okay, Stephanie, you could unmute yourself. Yes. Are, are y'all looking to go up next year? On the, I'm sorry. Uh, on, the, on the dues? Are you looking to go up next year on the dues? Um. At the moment, that's not something we have um, we have started to work on yet. We we normally start budget season 
in August. So sometime in August, the the property manager for your association will will begin conversations with the board to to discuss whether that's needed for next year or not. Okay. So let me ask you this. I have a lot of concerns about our HOA as far as not enforcing things. So and not not fighting and not and I know several people in my neighborhood that don't pay their HOA and I don't think it's fair to us that pays it and then y'all go up because other people aren't paying. I I really have a problem with that because after a while, it's going to keep going up to the people that are paying it are not going to be the, uh, be able to afford to pay. Correct. And, and, and that's, that's very unfortunate, Stephanie. And I apologize that that's going on in your association. But those, those are some of the, the concerns that we have from the management level, as well as um, boards, as well as homeowners like yourself, where it is unfair that you know um you're paying your dues but your neighbor to your left to your right in front and behind you aren't paying their dues um and then if those dues were to increase they're still not going to pay them but you will so that that is extremely unfair and there there are measures that we can take um alongside the board's decision and the board's approval for your association where we can assist and facilitate not only um the collection of those dues but also legal action if it's if it's necessary. Okay. That's pretty much all I had. Okay. I think Michael, you had you had something? I, I did, Anthony. I appreciate the, the time and appreciate the, your your time in, in providing this this chat. Um I was <clears throat> so I wasn't sure it's the first time I have attended one. So it's I wasn't sure whether this was directed towards or intended to be for homeowners or for board directors. I'm a, uh, a board director uh, at my community. And one of the things I was hoping to, to hopefully hear from you is ideas on how to collect um, from homeowners that are not paying, right? Uh, whether they're not able to or just don't want to. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, we, we've got a, a certain percentage of homeowners that just um, historically just never paid. And um, and so so I'm trying to get ideas or I was hoping to hear some ideas on how to go about collecting from those types of homeowners. OK, that, that's a great question, Michael. And, and I, I mentioned it briefly, but just to get a little bit, you know, into the meats and potatoes of it. Um, initially, the, the, the usual steps that that a board can take is to assess the late fees and the interest fees. But of course, if they're already not paying their assessments, most likely they're not gonna pay those either. Um, based on the association's governing docs and, and what they can and cannot do legally, um, the HOA should in all likelihood have an attorney. Does your community have a, a, an attorney on retainer? We we do, and we we okay. we, ass we assess late fees. We assess uh, interest charges also, and it just there, there's uh, like I said, there's a select few that just choose not to uh, to pay no matter what. Okay, so that's 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 a good example, and it's actually a prime example of a case in which we would advise, um, and we can also um, spearhead this if if the board would like to push those accounts into collections with the HOA attorney. Um, the attorney can um, begin to file cases against those homeowners, um, send demand letters from the attorney's office directly to the homeowner so they can see that it has now become a legal matter. Um, the HOA can have the ability to also place liens against the property um, based on those unpaid assessments. Um, those liens will eventually come to fruition if that homeowner decides to ever sell their property. They won't be able to sell the property without removing that lien. And that lien can't be removed without paying their assessments. Um, sometimes those dues are um, handled at closing and the HOA can recoup those funds, but that, that, is, that is way down the road. Um, but in the immediate um 
I guess an immediate solution would probably most likely be in your case, Michael, to seek counsel from the HOA attorney. Um, Arden also does have a collections program in which we, we can discuss um, more offline one-on-one -on -one to see how it can be tailored to meet the needs of your association. But once, once a homeowner or a set of homeowners have refused to pay their dues, um, late fees and interest fees are also not promoting them to pay it. Either a collection policy or um, pushing those accounts into collections with an attorney usually has very good results. Um, yeah, and, and we've done we've done both of those, right? We've done the uh, collections, we've done the liens. The problem with collections is that uh, the collecting company, the, the legal team will keep a percentage of that money collected, right? So that we, we end up losing some of the assessments there. And then the problems with liens is that, as you said, it's we don't get that money. It doesn't really impact the homeowner until they decide to, to sell, if they mm -hmm. decide to sell. If they are content at their, their house, the, the, it's just going to continue to grow. So, um, and we, we do have a rule internally that we i mean we will use collections but only after it reaches a certain percentage so that we a it costs to send it to a legal team b we lose a percentage of it right so right you've got to have it at a minimum uh, amount due before we uh we push them over to collection so we right. utilize both of those already uh within our community uh so it seems like what we're doing is kind of online with the options that are available to us. There's no uh, uh, nifty little tricks that uh, we could possibly uh, attempt. Yeah, I, I think if if your community is already, you know, exploring and, and, and going down those lanes in terms of collecting, collecting those past due assessments, in, in all likelihood, it probably and it is better to, you know, have that collecting agency or that HOA um, attorney keep a small percentage of those fees as opposed to never being able to see them at all. Right. Um, it's, it's, I'm not sure what percentage they, they have um, quoted to your association in terms of what they'll keep after collecting assessments. But I think, you know, if, if you're losing $5 out of a hundred, it's, it's better to get 95 than zero. Yep. Um, but I think I think those are the the best avenues that that we have at the moment. Um, I think once it's with legal, there there is no there is no other level above legal. Um, at that point, the attorney you know takes them to court. They can file motions against them. Um, but at the end of the day, we we also cannot force someone to pay either. Got it. Understood. Yeah. Um, Stephanie. You have your hand raised. Oh no, I just didn't lower it. I'm good. Okay, okay, no problem. Um, yes, I can see your name. I see your email there, but go ahead. Can you state your name, please? Yeah, my name is Joy. I am. Um, we we have done the same, and with this collections, um, I feel like the management company is not really doing enough because we always have to call in we have to t ask them um have you done this or especially we we dealing with le with um leases for in uh, we have a lot of them in our subdivision so um they seem to be very lax on you know they say in in paper we do this and we'll do that but it never seems to be in fruition until we call and say, well, how come this wasn't done? And they, oh, oh, yeah, well, we're going to do that right now. So it's a little disheartening for someone to say, this is how we're going to handle it. I don't know if you're short staff or what the deal is. Okay. Well, thank, thanks for the comment, Joy. And do, do you have, I don't want to get too specific into, into your case without, you know, being able to divulge information to, to the other um, attendees that we have here. But is, is your community enrolled in, in a collections policy? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and like I said, I don't want to divulge too much into it, but a, a collection policy is designed to have multiple steps. Um, there are usually six steps 
And the final step is the account is turned over to the HOA's attorney. Um, prior to that account being turned over to the attorney, um, the homeowner is assessed certain charges based on the steps of the policy. So just, just to mention a few, some of them is a demand letter, which is a demand for payment. Um, if the community has common elements and their governing documents allow it, the homeowner can be revoked those, the access to the common elements of the association. So once the association um, enrolls in that collection policy with the board's approval, the policy kicks off. And at that point, as, as the management company, we're overseeing those steps to make sure they're, they're happening when they're supposed to. And since it's automated, they are occurring. And I think, and I, I could be wrong, but maybe, maybe some of the frustration from your community is that those steps are being taken but the homeowners are still not paying their dues. That, that could be an option. Um, I, would, I would have to speak with you offline to see what specific examples you have in your community. But that, that, is, that is a common feedback that we, have, that we do get some, from time to time, that the collection policy is in place, but homeowners are still not paying. Um, that's, that's one of the options, like I mentioned to Michael earlier, and then once once that account is turned over to a, an, an attorney, that's where the matter becomes much more serious. It becomes more intense. But prior to reaching the attorney, if the association is in an ardent collections policy, it, it must go through those steps. Um, yeah, well, we've had some people that have been fined and sent fine letters to the wrong gag on the dress. And pictures, and then the owner comes back and sends pictures to the board and say, "This is not my property." Okay. Well, we we can discuss that one off um, offline, Joy. Um, I I don't I don't want to dismiss your question. I I, I took note of it, um, and I'm going to put my email in the in the Q and A chat. So if you could just kindly send me an email, um, I I don't want to. I'm asking you for any personal information in, in this in this forum. Um, if you also want to jot it down, it's just Anthony at myarden.com. And I'll be glad to have a call with you offline to, to address those specific concerns. All right. Okay. I, I do know in my community that we have a lot of rental property as well that is not upkeeping their property or paying homeowner association. What do y'all do in that type of situation? Unfortunately, I'm not on the board, so I don't know the rules and I don't know the legal aspect. But like I say, when them, they not doing what they have to do, we have to eat the cost. Right, when, when, when there's a, a, in, an association that has, I guess, for lack of a better term, a leasing issue where a lot of the, properties in the community are being leased um, primarily in this day and age a lot by LLCs. Um, unfortunately, depending who you ask, there, there is a common theme where the tenant does not maintain the, the, the landscaping and maintain the, the upkeep of the, of the property. Um, what we do as a management company is that we do send violations and fines depending on what is what is being violated? Is it is it weeds? Is it the grass? Is it fencing? Is it um, ARC related? Is it structural based? Um, we do send fines. We normally mail those notices to the mailing address on the property because normally, if it's being rented, the mailing address is off site. Um, should those notices go to the actual property? the tenant is going to see them. And in most cases, they're just going to get rid of them. They're going to toss them in the garbage. So we'd send those notices, not only via email to the owner of the property, whether it's you know uh, a person or an LLC, but it's also sent to the mailing address on file. Um, and then it's, it's, the burden is placed on them to take action. Otherwise those fines, those violations continue to accumulate on the account. Um, and some boards can choose to, you know, um, get the work done 
to the com- to the property, fix the weeds, fix the fix the fence, and then place those charges on that property's account. Um, should the governing docs allow for such action? So those are two different options that we can take um, from the management side of of the scenario you placed. Okay. Um, and like I said, Stephanie, I, I did put my email in the chat. I, I do want to address specific concerns one-on-one with you all. Um, I, I don't want to um, go off and mention, you know, folks um, association by name or property addresses and things like that. I'd rather have a one-on-one that way, since we most likely do manage the communities in which in which you guys reside. Um, we can discuss it like that and, and come to to a conclusion and a resolution. Okay, because I I do have a lot of concern, so I will email you. And um, I think in my property we got some room on the board. I want to also look in that as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, so definitely. I would definitely. I would definitely email you. Okay, I did put my email in the chat. Um, if you're not able to see it because you're on your phone, it's Anthony at myardent.com. Okay. Okay. Uh, Joy? Yeah, you said that um, you could fix the um, a bridge, uh, whatever the problem is on the property. And we had some people that their lawn, their lawn was up to our knees and we sent someone over to cut the grass. They came outside with a gun and said, get off my damn property or I'm going to shoot you. So it's very dangerous to advise someone to go on someone's property, do any kind of repairs or anything. And this, these people, it's been a year and a half and they just. Yeah. I, and, and, they, and they are winners. They don't even own the house. Yeah, I, re- I remember that example specifically. Um, I, I know exactly who that happened to. Um, that is that's extremely unfortunate. Um, we we again, we as the management company, we work at the discretion of the boards. So we would never volunteer and send someone out to do something like that. It would be communicated beforehand that we would like to pursue this avenue and, you know, put an abatement on the property because the HOA incurred this expense. Um, it, it, it could happen again, the, the scenario in which you describe joy. Um, I don't want to dismiss it, but I, I will say that it could be a one off scenario. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's something I wanted to reiterate again. We also cannot force someone to cut their grass or to pay their assessments. All we can do is, um, explore all the options available to the HOA based on the governing documents of the community and ultimately seek legal counsel. Um, and we've even had code enforcement go out there and he sees them looking out the blinds, but they won't open the door. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an unfortunate, but it's, it's a very common situation. And I, I will guarantee you it, it's not just happening um, with that household that you're referring to, it's happening across HOAs everywhere. Um, it's it's a it's a common theme. It's a common issue, um, and a common grievance for for boards everywhere. To be quite honest with you. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think we lost Michael, um, and we do have more time. So I wanted to just you know keep the keep the conversation going. If you guys have any more questions. Um, I'm here till seven. Otherwise, um, we can, we can discuss offline one-on-one specific scenarios for your communities and, and address those at a later time. But otherwise the floor is still open for, for anything you guys might like to add. Uh, Michael, I'm good. Okay. Uh, yes, Joy. Uh, I think Michael was, was another attendee, but he stepped oh, out. I'm sorry, Anthony. I kind of got on late. You said you talked about some things in the very beginning. I missed the first 10 minutes. Was it in reference to going about collections or was it more just about what Arden can do as um, your management company? It was it was more per, it was a more general explanation as to. Um, the current economic state of the country and how it does impact not only big corporations, 
um, but it also impacts HOAs. This webinar will be is being recorded and it will be posted on our website if you wanted to catch the first 10 minutes at a later day. But those those first few minutes were mainly to discuss the economic situation of the country, um, how inflation impacts everyone at the grocery store, at the gas station, whether or not you can afford to pay your water bill this month versus your HOA dues, the hardships that inflation and the current economic um, turmoil that we're all experiencing can affect us on an individual level, but it also affects the HOA as a whole because the HOA is made up of regular people, whether you're on the board, whether you're, you know, you're just a homeowner, inflation does impact you at the end of the day. Um, and sometimes it impacts us to the point where we can't afford to pay those dues. And those dues are what maintain the community. Um, and especially if it's a community that is that is already struggling, where the dues are not being paid on time, um, and then inflation hits, it's it, it can really cripple an association. Um, that's just a real high level of what I of what I mentioned in the first ten to fifteen minutes. Um, but if you wanted to hear it again, it, this webinar will be posted on our website um, sometime within the next few days, most likely on Monday, um, and you can watch it there as well. Okay. Um, one other thing I wanted to ask is, um, you know, inconsistency with how you're posting. Sometimes um, the information that we get come back a little bit late. Say, for instance, what happens when you, um, we've had a tremendous time getting everything integrated into the systems. And now we're feeling like some things are just, um, like when we go on the portal for the homeowners, it doesn't show all the current violations that are on the website. Now, I, I don't know if it shows it on a, that paper that you print out, but on when you go on a lot owner's a property, I mean, on their website and say, okay, they have violations for such and such. And we've had violations that the owner called in and said it's been remedied and then it totally has not. We have to send pictures to say this has not been remedied. Why is it been resolved on the website when you can clearly see from these pictures that it is not? So taking just an owner's word without proof of, of a re resolution is kind of disheartening, too. Yeah, and that's and I, I can assure you, Joy, that is not the process that we have in place. Um, we have very strict procedures where we require proof, not only for a remedied violation, but also, for example, um, not to go off on a tangent, but a, a refund request um, without the proper documents, the prior paperwork, the prior, the proper receipts and documentation for said payments, we will never issue a refund, um, primarily because those are HOA funds. We are not entitled to those funds. No homeowner is entitled to those funds. Um, it is the ownership of the homeowners association. Um, so in, in your case, I, I would love to see specific examples of that, but there, there should never be an instance where a violation is marked as resolved without pictures and documentation of that actually being resolved. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie, is your hand up by accident or do you have something else to add? It's up by accident. <laughs> I'm good. No worries, no worries. I'm not good with that hand raising thing. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, so we we do have another twenty minutes. Uh, Joy, if if you don't have anything else, I think Stephanie is good. She said, um, we can end it here in the next few minutes. And like I said, the webinar will be posted um, on our website within the next few days. Um, I did put my email in the chat. And again, I'll, I'll say it verbally. It's anthony at myardent.com. Feel free to send me an email and we can, we can discuss your, your concerns one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and we can also um, come to a resolution to, to whatever is um, either an ongoing issue or concern within your respective communities.